Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Wagner's Der Fliegende Holländer, which I saw last night at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. The conductor was Donald Renickels, the production was done by Christian Spuck, the sets were done by Rufus Didvistus, the costumes were done by Emma Riot, the assistant director was Eva Maria Abelein, the lights were handled by Ulrich Niepel, the chorus master was Raymond Hughes, and the dramaturgy was handled by Dorothea Hartmann. I was anticipating this particular production because this was the first time I was going to see Swedish dramatic soprano Ingela Brimberg live at this particular opera house after I've seen a couple of snippets of her singing Elektra live from the Fura del Baus. I'll get to her later, but first, my thoughts of the production. I found it to be appropriately gloomy, gothic, and it has that sense of odious mystery surrounding the entire set. On top of that, this is pretty much what Eric has to see since he is on stage from beginning to end. He begins the action by at first kind of sulking on stage, but it's safe to say that he is basically the one who moves the action and he sees what is going on on the sea, in Zenta's home, and everywhere else. It's basically him reacting to how Daland interacts with the Dutchman and how the helmsman got himself into this situation where he encounters the Flying Dutchman himself and also shows him how he feels when Zenta chooses the Dutchman over him. Yes, he does act a little bit mopey and he is angsty over this entire affair, but that's safe to say that it's basically how he feels and how he feels kind of helpless when Zenta just chooses this mysterious stranger over someone she has known for quite some time. And instead of the ending being that Zenta jumps off a cliff to be reunited with her true love, the Dutchman, the Dutchman leaves the stage and Zenta runs herself through Eric's hunting knife, thus leaving Eric alone on stage once again. And going back to the production designs, it's suitably gothic, it's suitably creepy, and it also heightens the dark and mysterious mood that the Flying Dutchman has to offer. And I also kind of like the fact that there is a huge puddle like behind the stage as if to say that they're in a water-like setting, a sea-like setting, and the costumes also speak volumes when it comes to the dark atmosphere. A lot of the characters are in either black or gray. The only one who has slightly colorful costumes is Eric, as he basically wears green and brown to show that he's a bit of an outsider to this type of frightening atmosphere, and he's someone who is still befuddled as to why these strange things happen, and why would Zenta fall for such a dark, tall, and mysterious stranger when he could have been her only solution. So overall, I really love this particular production. Darkness, mystery, and all. And I also love the use of mist and fog, which helps heighten that epic feel, and it heightens that really mysterious feel, and it is a blast of an experience. So, not gonna mince words here. The production and costumes and the overall feel gets a total A plus from me. And now we get to the singers, starting off with our titular anti-hero, the Dutchman, who was sung by Samuel Yoon. Now, I have followed this particular bass baritone's career for quite some time, as I first saw him live singing the role of Mephistopheles from Hector Berlioz, La Domination de Faust, and I thought that his portrayal of the Dutchman was suitably gritty, suitably mysterious, and suitably virile. What I really love about Mr. Yon's voice is that it has that masculinity. 
it has that round and rich color, but at the same time, it's homogenous throughout all the registers, and he has a very strong stage presence. You could feel it when he enters on stage, and you can't help but shiver with both anticipation and wonder as to who this guy really is. And you feel fascinated every time Mr. Yoon is on stage because he has a strong presence, he has an equally strong voice, and he has a certain charisma that makes him totally alive in this particular character. This gentleman has been very well known for singing a lot of villainous and ambiguous characters. Villainous characters like Alberich and Klingzor, and ambiguous characters like that of Wotan, and even some noble characters like how he's going to attempt the role of King Henry the Fowler from Lohengrin in a year or so, or maybe in a few months. So I'm not going to mince words here. Samuel Yun was a handsome Dutchman. He had this charisma that made him stand out strongly, and he was in fine vocal shape. Tobias Kira was an equally strong, surly, and very handsome Daland. I've also followed this particular Basso's career for quite some time, and his voice has grown richer and fuller as the years rolled by. What I really loved about Herr Kera's interpretation of Daland is that he's not only able to make him a surly and really macho figure, but he makes him quite warm in some areas, especially with his only daughter, Zentha, played by Ingela Brimberg, and he really knows how to balance comedy and drama, and he's a fun character to witness. Yes, Dalan may seem like the type of character who cares more about money, but he does care about his only daughter, Zentha, and Herkera manages to present those two facets really well. And he continues to be a charismatic singing actor. Heck, I would love for Tobias Kera and Samuel Yun to sing the Grand Inquisitor and Filippo II, respectively, and maybe even the roles of Fafna and Fazolt, Titorel and Gournemans, and maybe even Sparpucile and Monterone, respectively, and a lot of other of these great basso roles where you have one basso there and one basso here, and they just sing the hell out of each other. That would have been really, really great to witness. In fact, I would go out of my way and say that Herr Kera's and Herr Jun's duet was really well done. Their voices blended handsomely, and I could definitely see them portray the likes of the Grand Inquisitor and Filippo in the near future because they do have really good voices for these particular roles. And as a soloist, Tobias Kira continues to stand strong on his own two feet really well. Then we go to the main reason of why I wanted to see this particular production of The Fling and the Hollander, and that was to see Ingela Brimberg as Zenta. I have seen a couple of snippets of her on YouTube singing the role of Elektra, and I thought that she had a fine voice. Yes, her voice may not have the laser-like high notes of Birgit Nilsson or Leonie Rezenek, or even that full, rich tone while having those laser-like high notes like Jane Eaglin, but she was able to be an accomplished actress, and she had a certain warmth to her voice, which makes her all the more endearing. And not to mention, she looked ideally girlish as Zenta, with her strawberry blonde shoulder-length hair, and that lovely looking black dress. I thought she looked ideally youthful and she was rather gorgeous to witness on stage. Yes, I would have loved her rendition of Zenta's ballad to have been sung in the original key of A Moll because that sounds more exciting. But I could definitely understand why a lot of sopranos would also sing it in the much lower key because Zenta in the first place is not an easy sing at all, and she has to conserve her voice 
for the last few scenes, which manages to involve a great amount of high singing, most especially singing a couple of high Bs, and at the same time, you need a very superb actress. And Ingela Brimberg did just that. She was a superb actress, and while she may not have the voice of, let's say, Birgit Nilsson, Leonie Rezenek, Gertrud Grobrandl, Ingrid Bjorna, Inga Bork, or even that of Jane Eaglin, I still have to give credit to Frau Brimberg for embodying Zenta with her youthful charms, but at the same time, her hysterically histrionic nature, thus making her character all the more fascinating to watch, though at times you'd want to wonder if Zentha really does need help from beginning to end. So I still have to give a lot of kudos to Ingela Brimberg for a job well done when it comes to embodying Zentha, characterization, voice, and all. She did a very fine job, and she was quite involving as Zentha. Then we go to Thomas Blondel, who sang the role of Eric, and he really sang the role. There was not one hint of barking whatsoever. However, there are times I found his chest notes to be a bit nasal and hollow. That's not to discredit his talents as a singer. I really love the fact that he was able to sing Eric instead of just barking certain passages. He has a naturally beautiful voice in the middle and high registers. However, his lower registers leave a lot to be desired. But when all is said and done, his vocal instrument was fine all throughout. Yes, he does lack the beefier tones of, let's say, Wolfgang Wingassen or Herbert Schachschneider or all of these great spinto tenors who have sung Eric, especially the likes of Fritz Uhl. But I still have to give lots and lots of credit to Thomas Blondel for naturally singing this role. Instead of shouting or barking, he sang this role with superb lyricism and some appropriate dramatic flair. But more than anything, he sang this role. And that's what's most important. Then we go to the helmsman who was sung superbly by Gideon Poppe. And what more can I say about this gentleman? He has a superb lyric tenor voice, as he's always had. His rendition of Mit Gewitter und Sturm was beautifully sung, and even though the high B flat was a little bit on the skimped side, he still managed to keep his sturdy lyric tenor instrument in position, and he was a superb singer as he's always been. And he's even a great actor as well. He has great theatricality, and he has superb comic timing, which is quite essential when you want to embody the role of the helmsman. So I still have to give major, major kudos to Herr Poppe for singing this role superbly. Equally as superb was Ronita Miller as Frau Mari, and she continues to keep her firm-sounding contralto voice in position, and she was quite dominating on stage. She had a strong presence, and she managed to make the best out of this particular character, and she managed to have her plush, gorgeous, and wonderful-sounding contralto voice in position, and she managed to sing her lines wonderfully. And she made the best out of Frau Mari, making her firm and kind, and at the same time, quite loving, and at the same time, quite dominant on stage. So overall, the singing was superb from all across the border, and special kudos has to go to Tobias Kira, Samuel Jun, and Ingela Brimberg for embodying their roles of Daland, the Dutchman, and Zenta superbly. And I also have to give lots of credit to Thomas Blundell, Gideon Poppe, and Ronita Miller for doing a job superbly done. And the conducting done by Donald Renickles was, as to be expected, superb. He led the orchestra wonderfully, 
and the chorus and orchestra of the Deutsche Oper Berlin, I mean, you can't feel disappointed with them. They succeed in every level. So overall, what a great evening it was to watch Der Fliege der Holländer. The soloists were superb. The conducting was magnificent all throughout. And the production was suitably enticing. And for those of you who saw this particular production of Der Fliege der Holländer, what did you think of it? Did you really love the production in all its mysterious glory? Did you also love the singers and was there a singer who stood out to you so much? Or did you feel like there were some elements that didn't really hold up so well? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later for my review of Berlioz, Le Damnation de Faust at the Staatsoper Theater. So until then, have a great day, everybody.